that we can start. Good afternoon. Thank you for being here. I am uh, Roberto Gassira, and together with uh, Roberto Piccirillo, my colleague, uh, we will talk about uh, Android Lollipop for Enterprise. Uh, we are two security, senior security researchers for the Mobile Security Lab, where we do a lot of research activity on mobile. And then we are also senior security analyst uh, and perform typical vulnerability assessment and uh, uh, addition testing activity. These are our, our, these are our information, and uh, please uh, uh, use this uh, hashtag of, for Twitter to tweet some image, as uh, the organizer asked us. Then, I would like to start with this slide. Can I speak with, without me? Can you hear me? Okay. And um, this, is a, this is a graph of the how many Android devices uh, are uh, starting to using it in enterprise world. As you can see, the number is really increasing in the last two years. And uh, it's, it's, mean some, it's mean that there are a lot of problems of security and in general problem with the handling of device uh, in mobile world. So a lot of solution, like the presenter said, are uh, starting to be really big, like uh, iWatch or uh, the same Android for work that are application for, solution for handling the devices and also for uh, mobile device management or, or enterprise mobile management. But here we, are, we would like to talk about uh, on uh, some uh, characteristics, new feature of uh, Lollipop that uh, uh, regarding the security and also the device administration and uh, the data encryption. So, we think that these are the main important point for a solution or for an application that a developer should write, should develop for an enterprise. So we, let's start with C Linux, which is the problem. Until Android 4.3, the security of the, uh, the platform was related to the uh, discretionary access control for applications and boxing. This is the standard Linux uh, access control, the user ID and GID of an application, in order to limit uh, an application inside its sandbox. But something like this, uh, that uh, during our activity we have found several applications that with this flag was able to uh, allow other, other applications to write inside the, the data of, of the same application. In this way, the security of Android was breached. But without routing, in this way, this is a very big problem. In fact, now, in fact, this is uh, um, replicated from this API. And so, mm, we, we have with Android is not so a valid, uh, strong uh, security uh, applications and boxing. So, now, with, uh, um, from Android 4.3, uh, um, Google has introduced the Linux. So Linux is a mandatory access control where over all processes of kernel. Mandatory means that uh, it's not the, the process or the application to, um, force, uh, to enforce an, um, a security, but uh, it's, the, it's a, a the kernel okay, that decides to, uh, to allow or not allow a permission. And also, so Linux allows to define fine-grained security policy, fine grained security policy. And uh, at the end, the main features are, first of all, better system service restriction and protection. That means that the system now is sandboxed at kind of level. And if, uh, and if the system, also the, a privileged system, is a, uh, has a problem, the problem remains inside, the, the, inside the, the, the sandbox of the application. So we have an improved access control. And also, we have the reduction, the reduced effect of malicious software. And at the end, they, we, in this way, with C Linux, the user is, uh, we, have, we have obtained the user protection from potential flow in mobile application. So, C Linux is based, is based on three core elements. The subject, 
the agent or the processes or group of processes that want to perform something, the action, and then we have the object. This is the file, the OS level resource that uh, a, a process would, would like to access. So we have a problem. We have, to, we have to identify each of these elements. So with Linux, we have a label. This label is identified with this four value. Username is always you. A role, okay, it means that uh, it's R for domain, a obj R for objects, for and it means for files. The type, that means the, the type of the resource, or the type of processes, or the domain. And then we have this, this value. In the next step, in the next slide, I'll show you two commands, typical Linux command, that has been modified in order to support, say, Linux. Now, if you open your terminal from Android 4.3 and use this command to switch these two commands, with ps minus zeta, big zeta, we have the, the label of the subject of the process and the security domain. You are, this is the, your day security domain. With this command, we have the uh, label of the files, like this. We have that uh, the cache is the, uh, the type, cache file, and so on. And also, we have that the Linux can run in two, in two ways, in, in two modes. Permissive mode, where permission denials are logged but not enforced. So it's, it's the, we have only the log, some log information. And then we have enforcing mode, where the permission denials are both logged and enforced. Here, we can do something like this with a rooted device. Mm, one week ago, uh, there was news that uh, uh, Google is removing from the Play Store application that's tried to modify this uh, security level. Because with root, if you have rooted your device, you can disable, or you can go from enforcing to permissive mode with this command. These are all standard commands that you can find on your device. This is a Nexus file not rooted, and you can do this, because uh, you don't have the permission. So, Android 4.3, see Linux in permissive mode. <coughs> then, with Android 4.4, they started with the partial enforcing. Only four security domain, only four group of application started to be limited with the Linux. And now, with Android, from Android 5.0, Dot x5 five, five and more, we have the full enforcing. All the domain, all the application will run in a real application sandboxing, and so now the platform is more secure. Then, let's talk about the smart lock. Another feature of lollipop. Smart lock. The problem is that uh, people doesn't like to insert every time a pin, a pass to the slave. So, what they what, they, what Google has introduced with Android is uh, the trust agent. This is the real technical name of the smart lock. The trust agent is, uh, is an agent that uh, uh, able to disable the device lock screen in trusted condition. Trusted condition mean uh, in condition that, for, that are safe for the user. That means if I'm connected with uh, my smart lock, with my Bluetooth uh, device, and so on. This is based on trust agent, where trust agent is a service that notifies the system about whether it believes that the environment of the device is trust, to be trusted. So this is an application, or better, is a service, background service, that run with this uh, permission, signal system, that means it should be signed with the same certificate of the ROM. And in this way, this agent is able to, uh, in, in trusted condition, to disable the lock screen. So we have uh, the smart lock uh, is the trust agent provided by Google Play Services. It means that maybe we hope uh, in the future there will be some API that let you to develop your trust agent. Because this, we, we take all of our information from the source code. And uh, we, see, we saw that the source code has a struct uh, really to be used, uh, so ready to be released as a public API. With this system command, the default system command, you can uh, uh, find out uh, which is the level or which is the trust agent that's running on the device. Until now, we have only the, the, the smart lock. And, this is, and these are the methods provided by the smart lock. So we have the trusted agent, the, the trusted Bluetooth, trusted places, my home, at work, trusted face, the old face lock, 
And then we have also the body detection. That's, uh, uh, the, the, the lock skin is disabled when you use your device. And also the temporary unlock is disabled of after four hours of activity and when the device is rebooted. But now, let's talk about uh, the kill switch factory reset. New, new news, wow, Android now has the key switch. So what is the key switch? You can, this is from the uh, official documentation uh, of Google. You can set up your device to prevent other people from using it. It's been reset to factory setting without your permission. It means someone stole your device. Now, if you try to reboot in recovery mode, it's blocked because the, it asks for the, your Google account. If you try to go in fast boot mode, to refresh the recovery mode, fast boot mode, it's locked. It's been introduced with Android 5.1, only for Nexus 6 and Nexus 9, and in the next slide uh, we know why. And it requires these three, these three uh, conditions. First of all, you have to set up a screen lock. You have to set up a default Google account. And also, now we have a new voice in the developer option. It's un unlocking. That's, that's it's disabled in settings developer option. If disabled, the device is protected. After that, if you change this, the device is not more protected. And okay, you need to wait 20, 72 hours when you change a password to unlock your device. So what's happened is with this flag? When you <coughs> enable <coughs> or disable this option, this method is called from settings, and now with the uh, Lollipop 5.1, a, a, a new service, background service has been introduced. This is the persistent data block service. Uh, that's able, uh, this service uh, <coughs> is able to write uh, on a persistent partition. Persistent partition means that uh, after factory reset, the data is not uh, deleted. And this is the, what they write uh, on, the, on this partition. <coughs> and with, the, with get prop of this uh, variable, you can know where is, uh, where is mounted this partition, percent partition. And now, let's talk about device administration API. <coughs> Sorry. Device administration API were introduced in Android 2.2, so at Froyo. They were introduced to allow to enforce security points on the device. Security points mean uh, the user must use a lock screen, the user must use a password at least of eight car characters, the, password, the user must disable the camera. Of course, uh, these features are oriented, enterprise oriented. There are some uh, vendor customization. The most famous is Samsung Knox. <coughs> this API are used by device admin, admin application. This is an application that, first of all, that <coughs> must be explicitly, en explicitly enabled in the device security settings. When it's, a, when it's enabled, cannot be uninstalled. It, use a con it, sh it, should, it could be controlled by a remote server. This is an example. This is a, and now is a, a, is a already installed in all, on all of your Android devices. This is provided by Google to find and to lock your device if you lost it. This is a typical device admin application. And also you can have several device admin application on your device. And the strictest policy among all these applications is applied on the device. Main feature, <coughs> API 8 mainly on, pa on the password. And from since API 8, we can lock and wipe the device. Then we can wipe the SD card. Then we can force device encryption. From a API 14, we can disable camera. AP a API 17, we can disable key guard. The key guard is so the, the mm, lock screen uh, widget. But from API 21, we have the managed profile, NFC provisioning that uh, after I would like to show you. Maybe. And then uh, you with from uh, since 21, uh, you can uh, modify uh, global setting information like uh, 
and also uh, certification authority certificate. And, now, and from API 22, you can disable the wipe factory protection. <coughs> this is how works the device admin. A device admin application has three modules. The first one is device admin receiver that communicate with the system. Then we have device admin info that give me information about the, the, my status, my uh, permission that I have like application because a device admin application has special and uh, particular uh, permission that a standard application doesn't have. And then we have a policy man, device policy manager. That's the object that we use to uh, interface with the system server to apply some policies and to perform some particular uh, operation. In this way, you can uh, uh, declare in your manifest your uh, uh, device admin receiver. This is a broadcast receiver that, uh, first of all, uh, must require the permission bind device admin to be called. In this way, we locked this device, this application to be enabled only by a system application because this permission is, the tip, is, is, is a signature system type. Then we have, uh, we can, we must declare uh, which uh, kind of feature we want, we would like to use uh, using this XML file and after I explain uh, how it works. And then uh, we must declare <coughs> an inter filter for, the, for uh, intercept this first event to notify the, uh, the application when it's enabled. So this is the, the policy, policy declaration. In this file, we declare which kind of feature our device admin application would like to use. And for if, when we, when we uh, try to enable our uh, per special permission, the user, to the user is shown a, a, um, a standard uh, activity like this. This is from the settings application. We can set, we can ask permission to limit the password of the, un of the user, where limit uh, we indicate uh, the length, how many character, uh, big character, low character. Then we ask to watch login, Watch login because in this way we can be notified when a user uh, uses an incorrect password. We, with the reset password, of course, we ask to reset the password for the user. Force lock means that I turn off the device. Wipe data is to clear all the data of the device. Expire password to be notified when a user has the password expired and also to set this value. And then we, we can ask to encrypt the storage of the device, disable camera, of course, to disable the camera of the user, and then uh, disable key guard feature, the key guard, the, the application at the lock screen. These are the main methods. You, of course, you must uh, uh, um, define on enable or on disable methods. And then uh, we, or the application performs all of its activity with this component, with the device policy manager. That, uh, of course, requires device administration rights enabled. And these are some of the main methods that we can use. Is ad admin active to know if I am an admin of the device, set password policy, reset password, are all information that, uh, all function that we can call to um, control the device of the user. But now we have this object. How can we enable the device admin of uh, my application? We can do this uh, using an implicit intent with the type action add device admin. With, and inside we put in the, extra info, in the extra fields some information. We launch this, uh, this, uh, uh, this activity. With this, and then we have this, the, the famous menu that I said before. When the user click on the activate button, the settings application, that's a system application, communicate with the system server, with, the, with this device policy manager service, and enable my device. And now we have the, a new feature, a really cool feature that I've introduced with the, with the lollipop, and this is the device owner. Device owner, 
is a, 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 low, a more low level device administration uh, application because uh, it can do uh, very, very, very low application uh, in uh, operation. And uh, in, in fact, it is defined as a specialized type of device administrator. And the uh, in, 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 uh, device owner has the ability to add or remove user, to modify global settings or global settings, to set application restriction, that's some, something that Roberto will introduce next, and is able to uh, wipe factory protection. So it's a really owner of the device, so can do something uh, that's really, uh, at the control of, the, of your device. This is typically used uh, for company device. Uh, is a, a characteristic introduced with Lollipop. Only one device owner can be active at a time, cannot be disabled or removed. Never. You have to flash your device to, to remove the device owner application of your device. Of course, re requires the device encryption to store some data and also, and it's very important features that it can be deployed and activated via NFC. Because the problem is that uh, I am a company, I have uh, 100 devices. Uh, in the past, you have to take the device, open the device, turn on, install, uh, put your cable, or, or going on. It was something really tedious. Now, if you have an NFC card, like your badge, this is an NFC card, with uh, an and on an NDEF message like this, uh, with uh, these three file fields are required uh, where we can set uh, the package name of the device on application, the download location, because automatically the device download the application from a remote server, and then we have to insert a device package check, admin package checksum, a checksum uh, I suggest to use uh, this command from uh, OpenSSL because uh, some chart you should remove. However, it's a SHA-1 uh, sum. In this way, when you put uh, the device, uh, when, you turn, when you boot the device for the first time, uh, that uh, uh, technically is in provisioning mode, you can put the, your NFC card near the device uh, and automatically the device start to uh, this, this, this uh, phase this uh, um, installation, automatic installation. Download the package and go on. And uh, so this device has been already uh, provisioned. He's informing me that uh, the device has been already uh, provisioned and there is already a device owner if I go in settings, so security, device administrator, there are several device administrator, but the device owner can be disabled. So now the user to be able to get the device must to format, wipe the device. So for a company, device owner with device protection the, 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 um, the company is uh, totally uh, owner of the device and, uh, and even if one try to st and one steal the device can do nothing. And um, the, uh, to work the device, uh, the, to work the activation, the device should be in device provisioning mode it's, and uh, it can be set with this uh, device, uh, with this uh, flag and with this secure setting. The phone, the, the phone encryption is required. And uh, if you try this, uh, pay attention because uh, you, can, you can modify these uh, settings using a rooted device. But when you, something goes wrong, uh, automatically the device restart and wipe all your data. When you finish the device administration, a file like this is written in the data system file, per, in the system, data system of, of your device. Now I'll give you to Roberto that will introduce the manager profile. Good afternoon. Uh, this is a new feature of a Lollipop managed profile. This is not an enhancement, but it's a new feature. And uh, um, it's available from uh, API 21. And with this feature, an enterprise uh, could run 
its application inside the user's device, separating the two uh, environment from uh, data, um, user data from uh, data of enterprise. With this feature, um, I can install a new profile and uh, I can control um, the application inside this profile. And for each application inside this profile, I can apply some, for example, policy. Or for example, uh, I can apply some restriction, for example, as uh, we will see uh, after, for example, in browser, we can block some URL. Or for example, we can set the, um, the search engine. This feature is uh, available thanks to uh, the works with um, a new library, a new API. It's uh, um, from Nox, uh, Nox API available um, from in the past uh, uh, in Samsung devices. Some information about Nox framework, uh, frameworks. It's a technological framework of course that uh, provides uh, business protection and uh, uh, personal privacy protection. Google and Samsung has written this, uh, this API uh, together uh, with, uh, three, uh, with three reasons in, uh, in mind. The first one is device and data security. Second one is support um, uh, uh, enterprise to apply some policies and restriction in order uh, to uh, allow the enterprise to manage application inside this profile. So, now we explain a, a piece of code in order to uh, install a new profile. You can get this, uh, this code from a sample <laughs> provided by Google, by Android Studio. There is a sample, uh, a sample code called Basic Manage Profile. So in order to install a new profile, you have to go through four, five steps. The first one, you have to, uh, to build, to uh, develop a, a broadcast receiver that extends the device admin, uh, device, uh, device admin receiver because it's based, based on uh, API administration. The second one, uh, we have uh, to declare in uh, your uh, manifest the permission that the application uh, perform the uh, new profile uh, and this is bind the device admin. So you have to specify an intent inside the, uh, the Android uh, manifest uh, because uh, um, when the system has, uh, has installed the new profile, the application can do some uh, init operation. You have, to, uh, you have to start this process of uh, um, provisioning by using an action, action provisioning managed profile, specifying a uh, package name of the application. And uh, um, next, we have to override the new function on profile provisioning complete. Uh, when the system has, has installed the new profile, you can, uh, you can do some operation. After that, you can enable the new profile. This is an example. Uh, you, can, uh, you have to uh, develop this uh, new broadcast receiver that extends the device, ad device admin receiver. And we have to override this function uh, after, um, inside, inside we can specify the, uh, the activity that um, uh, will enable the new profile. This is uh, the uh, Android manifest. It's the same as uh, um, uh, with uh, API administration. We specify the permission that the application have to use uh, by the visa admin. A policy declaration, but in this case, uh, could be uh, empty the policy declaration. It's a file, an empty file. And uh, the intent uh, used by our application. So now we have to start this uh, process uh, and we, uh, we can build a new, uh, a new intent with uh, this action, action provision manager profile. We have to specify the, uh, new, the package name of the, our application as extra intent. And the important thing, we have to verify that the, the device is enabled to, um, uh, is, uh, has this feature. 
and uh, to verify this uh, situation, uh, you, uh, you, can, uh, you can ask uh, uh, the package <coughs> manager if there is uh, uh, a, um, an activity that could uh, resolve this intent. After that, we, we can start with the, uh, the, new, uh, the new activity by intent. So after that, we have installed the new uh, profile, but uh, it's not available on the devices, but we have to enable this, uh, this profile. Uh, we can do this uh, by device policy manager, and we, can, uh, we have to specify the name of the profile that we will have next in our uh, admin profile. A use a device policy manager using this method set profile uh, name. After that, we, uh, we are ready to enable this profile and use it. So, you have a new, uh, for a new profile, we have a new account uh, under the settings accounts. It's not very clear in this image, but uh, here there is a new, uh, a new account for the new profile. After that, we have uh, an, another, another profile under uh, uh, device administration. Uh, with name uh, work uh, is uh, the, the new profile where the enterprise could install the, uh, the new application. And now we have uh, the list of application inside, uh, inside on the devices of the user, but we, uh, we can know uh, this application because the new application are badged. So this is a, a global scheme that explain how this uh, process of provisioning uh, works. In the left side, we have the application that we have already uh, developed. And uh, the right side, we have uh, um, the, um, the checks, the operation that the system uh, did. In the first one, we start the process, the provisioning process, with this intent, with this action. After that, there is a, 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 a package in our device with this feature, Manage Provisioning Activity. And this activity performs some checks uh, in order to verify that uh, on devices it's all okay. For example, <coughs> uh, um, ask to the, uh, verify the system is, uh, uh, is enabled for this feature, or for example, uh, that uh, the, device, the, user, uh, the user is the owner of the device. The device uh, must be encrypted, and uh, this profile is, it, uh, is uh, new. After that, after this check uh, is okay, uh, the, the process continues with the services of a managed provisioning the services. After that, um, the system installs the new profile. After uh, the system uh, finished with this work, um, send an action device admin enabled, and the control uh, go in the, our application. After that, we are ready to enable new profile and configure, uh, for example, app restriction. In this case, uh, we have uh, an application on uh, our device, for example, a calculator, and uh, we want to add this application in the new profile. For uh, uh, to do this, uh, we ask uh, the um, we use the device policy manager, the package manager. Uh, we uh, we can get the information about uh, about application specifying the package of the application. In this case, a calculator uh, the two, and after that, uh, by device policy manager, we um, we can enable this application by device policy manager specifying the, the, the basic device that we received developed before and the, uh, the, um, the package of the application. So we have, uh, during the life of a managed profile, uh, the application could be hidden and uh, unhidden, specifying the package name. For example, in this case, we can uh, for, um, <coughs> hide the, uh, the application with the package name, and we, uh, we have to use the device policy manager with the method the set application hidden, specifying a true if we, wo if, uh, um, if we want a hidden uh, application or false uh, in other case. So, after we have a new profile with a new application, we can specify if the intent can cross between different profiles. For example, in this case, 
we build a new intent in order to share some content, for example, an image or a, um, another, another resource, we can specify uh, uh, um, always by uh, device manager policies if the profile, the, the, the new intent could cross between profile. With this method, add cross profile intent filter, specifying our broadcast receiver and the filter. In the other case, if, uh, if we won't uh, um, deny this uh, possibility, we can use the device policy manager with the clear cross profile intent filter. So we have a new profile. Uh, we want to, for example, uh, apply some restriction for browser for Chrome application. In this case, uh, we define some restriction. For example, we disable the bookmark. Or for example, uh, we set some uh, two URL for, uh, uh, for, um, for the browser. Or for example, put some restriction on the URL that the, the user can visit. In this case, example.com and example.org.org. Yeah, um, after that, we, uh, we can set the new restriction with uh, uh, always uh, by manager, device policy manager. So, in this case, we have configured some bookmark for uh, the user. It's not clear in this image. In this case, the uh, anonymous navigation is disabled and the user can use uh, this, uh, this feature. We have blocked some, uh, some URL, and then we have configured a search engine. So, when you develop an application, you have the possibility to specify which restriction could, uh, could be applied on uh, your application. To do this, uh, you have to um, specify some restriction in Android manifest. You have to specify the, um, uh, this resource for, uh, for restriction and in, uh, by uh, external resource, you have to specify uh, each restriction that you want. For example, in this case, we have a key that identifies the new restriction, can say hello, and uh, we specify the default value for, uh, for our restriction. In this case, is the type boolean. Now, uh, it's possible to, uh, to ask the appli um, to application which kind of restriction is available on application. By a new services, the restriction, restriction services, we can ask for, uh, for the restriction <coughs> of application. In this case, for example, we ask uh, for the, uh, the restriction that we have defined. In this case, K can say yellow. After that, we can, uh, we can take some action. Okay. But if, he, if I want to uh, set some, uh, some restriction, I can, uh, I, can build, um, I can make a build with the, new, uh, with the key for, uh, for a restriction. In this case, a Boolean restriction key is yellow. We put true. And by device policy manager, we can, uh, um, we can, apply, we can apply this restriction uh, the, by this method, the set application restriction. Uh, to, uh, to enable, to enable uh, this is another feature, another arrangement of uh, Lollipop. Uh, it's uh, mandatory for, uh, for use managed profile. Encryption is, uh, um, is uh, in the process of encoding user data on Android device using an encryption key. An encryption key. And uh, in, um, in, in Android 5.0, uh, there are four arrangements for, uh, for this feature. It's an effects encryption because only uh, data blocks uh, are encrypted. Uh, there is another, another uh, flag, uh, force encrypt, in order to uh, encryption, encrypt, in, encrypt uh, the device at the first boot. Another cool feature is uh, to support encryption without password that we will, see, we will show uh, after. And uh, now we can use uh, the, um, the trust execution environment in order to, uh, to, to make a key that will be used when we have to, uh, we have to secure the master key uh, 
uh, used to encrypt the, the, um, the disk. This is some, uh, um, some technical information. The disk encryption on Android is based on uh, DM crypt. It's, uh, it's, um, it's used in uh, Linux. And uh, in order to, uh, to um, encrypt the, uh, the disk, uh, it's used um, a key of uh, 128 bit with AS in CBC mode. Uh, next, we have a, a slide that is uh, more clear. Uh, the, the key used in order to, uh, to encrypt the, the disk uh, is called the uh, master key. And uh, the, um, the important thing is that in Android there are four encryption states uh, with uh, states default, pin, password, and pattern. I think it's better this image that explains this feature because when the device starts at boot time, uh, it uh, generates a, um, a 128-bit uh, um, IS key for disk encryption. After that, uh, we have to uh, secure this uh, key on the device. To do this, uh, the Android um, performs a key derivation process, process um, with this step. The first one, hash the new key, <coughs> together with the default password, if the user uh, didn't choose a, a password or pin or pattern, with a salt. With hash, um, the result is uh, D, a digest. This digest is, uh, um, uh, is passed to the trust execution environment that uh, signals this, uh, this hash with a private key, and the result of this private key uh, perform, uh, uh, this is the result of the, uh, the signal of, uh, with private key. After this, uh, can uh, hash this value, S, uh, S1, and obtain uh, K1. K1 is a uh, S key uh, used in order to encrypt the our key, uh, K. After that, uh, use this key in order to, uh, to secure the master key key. Okay, thank you very much. Any question?